When people think of lean manufacturing or other continuous improvement efforts, their minds typically jump right to assembly operations and, to a growing degree, offices. But a lot of manufacturing takes place in loud, generally dirty fabrication areas. Now, before those of you who aren't in fabrication settings tune out, I want to stress that this is a good idea to know what is happening at the back of the factory where the raw materials come in. That understanding can come in handy when you are working on improving a process that is connected to the fabrication side of the building. So stick around now to hear a bit about what fabrication is, the types of fabrication processes, and how continuous improvement in fabrication affects your entire operation. Hi, it's Jeff Ajik here from Velaxia Continuous Improvement, where we focus on helping you drive positive change in your organization, changes that benefit both you and your company. If you are new here, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and like it down below. I also recommend making sure to click on the links that we provide in the video so that you can get the most out of the information I am presenting. Okay, now let's dive into talking a little bit about fabrication and a lot about the types of fabrication you will likely encounter in your lean travels. Let's just start out with a general overview about what fabrication is. It's the act of taking raw materials and turning it into a part for use in an assembly process. Very few end items are produced using only fabrication processes though. There are many different types of fabrication processes. These can either change the shape of raw materials, remove material, and to a growing degree, add materials. The most common fabrication processes are one, cutting, two, machining, three, punching, four, stamping, five, folding, six, sharing, seven, welding, and eight, additive manufacturing. Let's take a look at the type of fabrication processes in greater detail. Keep in mind that this is more of a primer of what is going on in the depth of your factory rather than to teach you how to do these processes. There is a lot going on in each of these types of fabrication. One, cutting. There are many ways to cut nowadays. The old standby is the saw. The most common saw in manufacturing is the band saw, though you will also see circular saws as well in some applications such as wood fabrication. Circular saws might be on a table saw or on a chop saw. Reciprocating saws move back and forth and are probably the type of saw cut people are most familiar with. Hand saws use this motion. Reciprocating saws are uncommon in commercial fabrication areas though. Old cutting technology used a physical cutting tool pressing up against the material of the part. Nowadays, new machines do the same function with tools that need no sharpening or that never wear out. These methods include plasma torches, water jets, and lasers. There is a wide range of complexity and price, with some machines costing into the millions. Number two, machining. Machining is a process of removing material from an item. It might be done on a lathe where the material rotates against a cutting tool, or in some other cutting machine where a rotating tool is moved in a variety of ways against a stationary piece. Drills fall into this latter category. The range of motion of the cutting head or spindle is defined by the number of axes, for example, a three axis machine. Large complex machines called CNC machines or computer numerical control can be programmed to make a variety of parts automatically. Some advanced CNC machines also have automatic swapping of the cutting tools. I should also note that there are many different sizes and shapes of these cutting tools that can let engineers design extremely complicated parts. The high speed cutting is typically very messy due to the metal shavings that fly off and the need to spray coolant at the point of contact where the cutting is done. Keep in mind that the cut is not just from the tip of the tool. Cutting tools can also cut from the side. The most common layperson example are the router or something like a Dremel tool. Obviously with a giant machine that has a massive motor, you can get some rather big cutting tools to scale up the material removal process. This type of machine is often called milling. Drilling is the other subset of machining where the tool makes a plunging cut from the tip. It is the process of making circular holes through an item. Machining equipment can range from a simple drill press on up to a multi-function CNC machine. Number three is punching. Punching is the act of a punch and a die forming a scissor effect on a piece of metal to make a hole in it. Obviously, the punch and die must be the same shape and size of the desired hole. In some cases, the main piece of the material is kept as in when holes are added for fasteners or to route cables through openings in a final product. 
In other cases, the piece that is removed is the desired product, and this is called blanking. Punching is done on a press with a set of dies. Some presses are massive and can automatically move a sheet of steel over a set of punches. Others are much more simple. They might have a single die set with an operator manually changing the material to make holes one at a time. I should also probably note that there is often more than one option for fabrication. A laser cutting machine can do some of the same functions as a punch, or simple holes can also be made with a drill press. Punches tend to be faster and cleaner than other hole making processes, but are substantially louder. As you can imagine, punching through a piece of metal is a big dynamic event. Stamping. Stamping is very similar to punching, except that the material is not cut. The die is shaped to make a raised portion of the material rather than penetrating completely through it. Note that stamping and punching can be done together in one step. The outline of the part is punched and the interior is stamped to give it some contour. Now the stamping process is limited. If the material is too thick, the press won't have the oomph to change the shape the way you want. If it's too thin, there won't be enough material to reshape. As the punch shapes the material, there are some simple physics at play. The material is conserved, so when you create greater surface area, going from a flat piece to a piece with some contour, the material has to get thinner. If you try to go too far at once, the material won't move the way you want, and you'll end up with damage to the piece, or it will be too thin, or the stamp simply won't work. Because of this, you may see the same part stamped multiple times to adjust it to the desired configuration, with each die moving a bit more material around in succession. Stamping and punching are both done on similar machines, with the main difference being the limit of the movement of the machine and the configuration of the dies. Number five, folding. Some parts need to be bent. The most common machine used for this is a press brake. It is a set of dies that pinches the metal to fold into a crease. This operation can only be performed in very specific cases due to the movement of the part during the bending process and the possible shapes of the dies. Designing for lean manufacturing, though, can help prevent complex shapes that slow down production. Sometimes using two different types of fabrication processes or two different pieces fastened together work better than one complicated bent piece. Number six, shearing. Shearing is the process of making a long cut on a piece of metal. It is, in effect, just like the action of one of those paper cutters with the long chop handle. This is done primarily on sheet metal. It is distinguished from cutting process in that this action is completed using brute force to force the cutting edge through the material. Contrast this with physical cutting tools that use the relative movement of the cutting blade against the item being cut. You can use a lot less force because the material is removed a small bit at a time. As with punching, sharing is much cleaner than cutting because there are no bits of material being removed and no coolant is required. With sharing though, the force required is quite large and applied a single time. That makes it a quick process, but also limits the thickness of the material you can cut. You are also limited in the shape of the cut. Shares work in a straight line. Number seven, welding. Welding is the act of joining two pieces of metal together. A variety of types of welding exists for use in different applications and for the range of materials used in manufacturing. Most industrial welding is done in a fixture that holds parts together. You may see welding done as a two-step process where the parts are tacked together and then the final welding is done in a second step. Because of the heat applied during welding, you sometimes get distortion or deformation on the materials on long welds. As a countermeasure, you might see skip welds where small portions are welded with gaps between. The design may or may not call for those gaps to be filled in after the material cools once it's um, sufficient to prevent any of the deformation. Number eight. Additive manufacturing. This is a relatively new technology. In effect, a machine layers material to form a part. It functions similarly to a three-dimensional printer that produces components in plastic, but can be done at a much larger scale and with more varied materials than typical printers. Industrial printers can produce parts in metal. They can even be big enough to produce entire houses using special materials. The geometry of the component produced can be limited due to the effect of gravity on the fluid materials before they become rigid. This limitation, though, is able to be overcome by some printers. Using UV lighting, some printers can nearly instantly cure the material, allowing for horizontal printing without support. Okay, that wraps up the free version of this content. There's quite a bit more available to our subscribers at Full Action Videos. If you like this content, please let us know with a like and a subscribe down below. 
If you want to get a lot more out of your production processes, we recommend our LEGO Flow simulation to help visualize how large lots hamper production, and our 5S LEGO exercise to see how much easier a job is with clear visual instructions. Thanks for watching, and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.